Copy. Vroom. Okay, Herc is clear to transfer. Happy. Robert, when you feel safe, could you pa uh, pan that camera around? Which which camera? This that camera? one, yeah. You don't want to <laughs> look at the bag one? <laughs> well, I, I oh, had enough. There we go. Thank you. A lot of jellies. Nice. Actually, those look like salps. Yeah. Salps. Salpy. Okay. Atalanta going off. Wow, that's a lot. Hmm. Makes sense. Nighttime come up. Don't they come up and migrate up at night? Oh. Wow. Mezzo on. Mezzo on. All stations, that's Atlanta. Clear. Copy that. Dive in. There we go. Not today. Yeah. Uh oh. Audio slate for dive hotel one nine six five UTC time zero six zero three zero zero mark Squid. Yeah. Squid around. Oh, I missed big, it. Big yeah. school of squid. Right there off the oh, porch. on the porch. Yeah. Goodbye.
I don't know if you guys got the script, but we get down, cue the Dumbo, comes in, <laughs> we get a shark, <laughs> and we, then we start on our way. Cue the Dumbo sounds like one of our hit <laughs> songs. <laughs> cue the Dumbo. Dumbo's agent called. He's uh, held up in traffic. He's going to be late. Really? We've got yeah. this bowl full of well, green M&Ms. He only wants the green. I that is know. so typical. <laughs> Body insisted we send a limo for him. Uh. <laughs> Had to wait on that. No. So on the 405, <laughs> it's Bulba to pass. OK, we'll switch. Oh, oh. squad. Oh, traffic. Nice. It does look like traffic. <laughs> OK, so in that case, we'll switch to the number uh, mute cute with the Halosaur <laughs> and <laughs> Oh, oh, wow. Ah, oh, so wow. Cool. Beautiful. Hi, friends. Cue the squid. Oh, I love yeah. that. Deck, Go ahead, Deck. Copy that. Five zero, taking it from here. Right. Pretty good. Sure do, thanks. Starting to sit down. Dive, dive, dive. Dive, dive, dive. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> One more dive. Oh. One more dive. <laughs> One. Oh, look at these pseudomorphs. Oh. oh. Whoa. Oh, no, wait. Okay. Cool. I, I got to get this. Giving it all he's got. So one of my favorite things about all squid that. is that they produce these that. pseudomorphs that uh, look like themselves. So they can uh, no. produce these those clouds are, of ink those are down there. to leave behind. They and then they can get night. away. And the predator that's going after them will go after their inky yeah. cloud that looks like a squid. That's so cool. Nice. So that's something new and improved. Yeah. At 26 right now. Good to hold position here with the ship. Pilots. Yeah. OK, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Bridge now. Makes you wait for it, you know. Good evening, Flavio. We can uh, hold position here. Oh, I thought And for our folks at home, thanks so much for uh, tuning <laughs> in. We are descending currently to explore the deep southern flank and summit of Gio 10. Our expected dive duration is about 24 hours with a max depth of 2440 meters. Chat, welcome. Um, so if you have any questions, please send them in. Also, our team just posted our highlights from our previous dive, the, our whale fossil highlights. So check out nautiluslive.org for those highlights. Increasing Great speed. to have you folks here. Um, as we explore Gio 10 together. Let me know when we're ready, 8 to 12. Okay. Uh, we're ready. <laughs> ready, ready. Okay. okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Wait, no, hold on. Hold on. We need our question. Yes, <laughs> true. <laughs> true. Okay, first, they got to check uh, in. How are you guys feeling tonight or this evening? Nah. Excited. Great. Last, Last dive. dive. Yeah. I okay, let's go. let's go. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go. Uh, all right, so we do have, I see, um, questions from our new viewers. Oh, so yeah, welcome. Um, let's, it's a 12. Let's start on our introductions. And of course, our questions, um, follow up questions. You come across, you oh, were in the uh, desert of some kind, or we were, no, no, no. We were out exploring the ocean, and then we, come, we came across a treasure chest, yeah? We mm. opened the treasure chest, there's this beautiful Sorry. lamp. Mm. And you so accidentally really rubbed the lamp, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, this beautiful, this amazing oh, genie <laughs> appears in the front of you, mm -hmm. and offers you three wishes, your mm. heart's desire. Mm. Okay, what would your <laughs> wishes be? This is an elaborate setup. To up to <laughs> right? Yeah, this I is a whole right. story. <laughs> this is a whole story. I'm only 49%. <laughs> <laughs> like, barely even right. <coughs> well, folks, yeah, I'll, I'll start. I'm Adam Sewell. Uh, watch lead for 8 to 12. I'm a 
professor at University of Rhode Island. Uh, my research is in submarine volcanism. And if I live on Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and if I were to rub that lamp and the genie appeared, <laughs> and then the genie said to me, you may have three wishes, I would wish for unlimited wishes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Is that it? No one said anything about the rule. <laughs> true. That, that's true. That's just, that's just a basic yeah. understanding. Also, Standard genie lamp rules apply here. Yeah. So no, you can't do unlimited <laughs> wishes? No. Yeah. Also, aren't we like not supposed to tell people our wishes because then they won't come true? That's birthday wishes. <laughs> I think it's all I wishes. I thought that was shooting star wishes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell people my shooting star that, wishes. Uh, yeah, I feel like this is going to be very true. personal. <laughs> Okay, I just, first wish would be to know Samantha's wishes. <laughs> <laughs> now it's getting deeper. Uh, then I would wish for, so you can't wish for unlimited wishes. No, because they said, stated from the get-go that you had three, three wishes. wishes. Could, well, I, wish, point, could I wish for a cake that never <laughs> disappears, no ma how, matter how much I eat it? No, yes. I mean, did we not learn might this think from you Aladdin? Have to eat the cake all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to wish you can't stop eating the cake. I'm going to wish to free the genie. Boom. Wow. wow. Okay. Mic drop. So this is just Aladdin. <laughs> so we yeah. can't no, because Aladdin. my first wish was to know what your wishes were. <laughs> A whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait! I get a magic carpet first, and then oh I yeah, the genie. yeah. Oh, this is a record. We're eleven minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> How long is this watch? <laughs> How long, long is enough. this this whole trip? Uh, uh, what are we? Uh... All right, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jules. I'm from Massachusetts. I work at the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard. I work with invertebrates. And what else? I'm a scientist on the Nautilus, on the H12 watch, obviously. Um, I wish my dog could talk. I wish my dog could talk. I wish my dog could talk. Three wishes. Boom. Like wow. Wishes. Like that. <laughs> you lost dog now. <laughs> okay. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Paula Santiago. I am from Puerto Rico, and I work over at Sociedad Ambiente Marino in coral restoration. And I am this watch data logger and this expedition science intern and my three wishes would be um i don't know i was just enjoying <laughs> hearing all the <laughs> he's spacing out <laughs> he's spaced out statehood for puerto rico say <laughs> the opposite um, independence, oh, yeah. puerto rico. independence for puerto rico yeah that would yeah. be amazing um independence for puerto rico the one wish i like that one Thanks, Adam. Mm. <laughs> then um, another wish. Um, I wish we had unlimited funds to explore the ocean. Like <laughs> no money no, limitations. Oh, money. That's the priority worry. for every country. Okay. And we'll see. And I wish. You should free the genie. That always. To free the genie, let's hold on to that wish. I'm assuming he's gonna be good when you free him. Might not be. Yeah, he's <laughs> gonna be your friend. Probably. You're right. I have bigger ambitions than you. <laughs> I just wanted that never-ending cake. That's all I wanted. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, thank you. So, well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Annie Halleck. I'm the Swatches 8 to 12 Science Communication Fellow. I am from Pango Pango, American Samoa. I teach marine science and biology back home at our local high school. And this is my first year sailing with the Nautilus. Um, three wishes. Whoa. Okay. One, I could have a superpower. Two, <laughs> I. Wait, what superpower? You That's a dangerous a wish. She's going to heal everyone. Wait, you're, you're, <laughs> they did it. All right. You have the biggest <laughs> thumb in the world now. <laughs> Wait, yeah, one, I could have any Terrible superpower. superpower. <laughs> um, two, I get everybody three wishes. Oh. And then nice. three. Only when the genie grants everybody's wishes, then he could be free. Okay. That's a good one. Those are my three. Okie dokie. Uh, front row, let's go. 
Samantha Wishnack. Well, I feel I feel like my Dave, wish is about Dave to come ready. true. <laughs> <laughs> All your dreams. Um, Samantha Wishnack, navigator, uh, also the operations coordinator for Ocean Exploration Trust. Um, I will have to say <sighs> gardens on ships would be great. I would love that. Uh, <laughs> Nice. Abolishing capitalism and the patriarchy, and free the genie. <laughs> cool. Free the genie. <laughs> free the genie. <laughs> <laughs> a little something in there for everyone. Oh. <laughs> Forever? Awesome. You just granted Adam's wish. <laughs> yeah. And my wish, thank you. Uh, Robert Waters, I'm the herd pilot. Uh, OET's uh, facilities manager and ROV engineer. And uh, I guess. Nobody said world peace yet. Oh, <laughs> <Aww. laughs> <Aww. laughs> Classic. You got to free the genie, too? <laughs> no, I think I'm going to let him go. That could be dangerous. That's true. We don't know why he's yeah. there. Wait, what was your second wish? Oh. Or and third wish? He's saving oh, it. For he's no saving one to, those. to want. Aw. Yeah. Yeah. Those are really nice. Yeah. That's yeah. number three. Uh, what's left? Free the genie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, health. You have it. You make. You make yeah. sure everyone's healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's healthy. There they you live go. Long and healthy lives. Yeah. There you Aww, go. Oh, that's so wholesome. <laughs> uh, my name is Mike Burns. I am the Atlantis pilot. Uh, also Atlantis. Atlanta <laughs> apostrophe <laughs> S. <Sorry. laughs> Atlanta pilot. <laughs> Trying to do numbers here. <laughs> uh, Atlanta pilot. Uh, also lead deck chief. Uh, for the Nautilus. Um, where are you from, Mike? Where are you from? Oh, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> no one else had it. Glasgow! New Jersey! Currently <laughs> residing in Glassboro, New Jersey. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, from Guys, Hawaii originally. You can't get him I to really stop like talking about Glassboro <laughs> every day and we hear about a new <laughs> corner store and just the trees are so nice. Loves it. Right, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> My wishes. Uh, I would say uh, housing for everyone that wanted a house. Oh. Uh, medical care for all. And my dog to live longer than me. Aww. Aww. Dude, that last one could backfire. Yeah. Jesus yeah. Just be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he'd be gone. <laughs> All right. At least my dog is still around. <laughs> she will remember. <laughs> All right. Down to me. <laughs> Dave Robertson, lead video engineer uh, on this expedition, sitting in the video seat tonight, zooming in on things. Um, three wishes. Only need one. Uh, I want that uh, $2 billion lottery ticket. Oh. And, uh, oh. Just rewind the tape back 12 hours and uh, take my answers from there, and, uh, and we're good. Nice. And then free the genie. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, your second wish was to rewind? <laughs> rewind the tapes? Um, no, 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 no. Just whatever I wished for with the $2 billion, that'd be enough. Okay, Roger. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much, team. And for all of our folks tuning in, um, if you have any questions for us, our team will be happy to answer them for you. Welcome. So, Adam, we have our new, we do have new viewers um, tuning in with their who questions. Who are now very conf confused. <laughs> God, this was ocean exploration. That's who weird. are these people? <laughs> Go on. Yeah. Um, so, we do have new viewers uh, tuning in and asking, so what is the objective of our, our cruise as a whole and our dive? Yeah. Great question. So, we are out in the Central Pacific near uh, Kingman Reef and Palmyra Atoll. And it's about how many miles from Hawaii? A thousand miles from yeah. Hawaii, wow. more or less. Um, it's a region called the Line Islands. There's a huge multi-thousand kilometer long chain of seamounts through here. And Palmyra and Kingman are uh, U.S. territory, so we're within the U.S. territorial waters here. Right around the Kingman Reef and Palmyra Atoll is a, a marine, a national marine monument. And but this area beyond that monument is um, being 
uh, what do you call the what's the it's word? Been nominated. For? Nominated for a National Marine Sanctuary, but we don't know very much about it. So we're out here diving and mapping in places that no one's ever been before. Uh, we're looking f to understand the the uh, ecosystems on, on the benthos and oh. in the water we'll column we'll uh, just leave it. and to was that, uh, uh, understand the geology and earth history of the region uh, and so we've been we'll bopping around oh. between different oh, seamounts okay. um, the dive we're doing tonight is on one of those seamounts it's typical of the dives we have been doing we're going from a deep part of the flank of the seamount up towards the summit, uh, looking at areas with seafloor relief, <laughs> bumpy parts of the seafloor, and right. area with steep slopes, <laughs> and we hope to uh, see what's down there. We're, the different seamounts, or the, at least the different dives we've done, have had different kind of dominant species, uh, sometimes a lot of sponges, sometimes a lot of corals, different corals, uh, and the rocks have also been really varied lots of basalt which makes up the seamounts but also lots of sedimentary rocks and carbonate rocks so uh, it is in the truest sense of exploration we're going to see what we see awesome thank you so much and then oh and this is a um, on the on another note um, <laughs> we do have a question from chat um, oh have you found any cold seeps during the expedition we have not found any cold seeps, and it would be um, pretty unlikely that we would find any here. Uh, they're most commonly found uh, on the margins of continents, especially mm -hmm. in kind of uh, compressional environments or really sediment-rich environments. The only thing that c we could find here is sometimes on really big seamounts that extend from the basement, so the rock part of the seafloor through a sedimentary cap, they can be uh, little kind of chimneys for aquifers in the ocean crust. Um, but we haven't seen anything like that. Uh, and we would notice them if we did because they're usually uh, hot spots for biology because of the kind of chemical rich water coming out of the seafloor. There's lots of chemosynthetic bacteria and things that eat those bacteria, uh, but we haven't seen anything like that yet. Thank you so much. And then, oh, I would like to um, start with the front row. Um, Samantha, so we have a question. Right row. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, so our chat row. is asking, um, so how did you uh, get this job? What um, certifications or training did you have to go through to get to where you are now? Well, that's a really interesting question because today I was um, actually awarded uh, a, a special nomination from the uh, Ship Move Association of America. Okay, thanks for the question. Uh, that is not a real association, um, <laughs> but my Yet. lovely watch team <laughs> made this beautiful sign. Paolo, was this you? That was it was a uh, team effort. Team effort. You guys are amazing. <laughs> this is this is really good. I already took photos with it. Um, <laughs> We're proud of you, Samantha. Thank, oh, thank you. <laughs> we know how hard you've worked. <laughs> we we to may get, get to a waypoint today. <laughs> um, probably not. Yeah, the logo is fantastic. Um, yeah, prob probably not. <laughs> uh, so the question was, how did I end up here as a navigator? Um, I actually started my path to Nautilus as a science communication fellow, so I was in Annie's seat in 2016. Um, and around the time that I came out for the first time on the ship, I was also hired as digital media coordinator. Um, so I actually came out to uh, join the team um, to manage our social media and website and external communications. Um, ended up managing communications for a few years um, and then moving into operations uh, two years ago. And around that time, also got the opportunity to start sitting in the Navarro and learn from that uh, side of side of things. Um, so my my background, um, I actually have a political science degree from the University of Chicago. So not not science, not engineering, um, but a lot of um, on the job training. And um, I, I used to work at Monterey Bay Aquarium, so my background was more in 
science communication and education. So, what's the uh, mascot for University of Chicago? The uh, maroons, the color maroon. <laughs> <laughs> Our slogan was also "Where fun comes to die." So, <laughs> um, <laughs> a long and winding path to get here. Uh, but um, yeah, Nautilus is a really interesting environment and exciting environment to be a part of because there's. Um, you know, it's a teaching and a learning ship, so we have right. interns out working with junior and senior members of the team, um, but also within the organization, there's a lot of um, uh, flexibility and being able to learn different roles and, and shadow folks. So um, I've now been sailing as now for a couple of years, and it's been a really great experience to just kind of see a different side of, of ship operations and learn more about um, ROV navigation and kind of be able to work across across teams. So my, my roles have kind of always been about working across teams and I really love being able to uh, help communications and help, um, yeah, keep things clear and, and moving. Literally, wish it moves now. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, and she then wants to be sitting in the Argus seat next. Yeah, hoping <laughs> to be able to try ROV next. Ooh. So. Yeah. Argus is on Very cool. Though. Argus Atlanta. Atlanta. and Atlanta. <laughs> well, it was next year. It might be Argus again. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Argus, Argus is fine. Is fine. <laughs> <laughs> is fine. Oh, yes, Chad. Argus is coke. fine. <laughs> Argus is totally fine. Even Little Herc. So the shirt we'll, we'll get for Chaos Crew will say Zoom in Dave on the front and Argus is fine on the back. <laughs> <laughs> I have a special announcement. Oh. Uh oh. Our next watch. Okay. We'll Juliana is going to be the watch lead. Wow. Oh, congrats. Does, Why does Jules know this? <laughs> she's she's just this learning show? it right I now. I was not aware. <laughs> I have a 4 a.m. interaction. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you're just going to sleep. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you so much. And then we have our ROV uh, Hercules pilot. Um. I would like to apply the same question for our viewers, please. You're going to have to remind him. Yes. Um, so how did you get this job? Like, uh, my first wish will be. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So how did you get this job? And what are the qualifications or certifications that you go through to get to where you are now? He made three wishes. No. <laughs> I think, yeah, go, go back to the beginning. It's a cool path. Uh. Yeah, I was working as an electronics engineer and defense contractor in San Diego. And I saw an ad for the Alvin submarine to uh, train to be a pilot and electronics person there. And applied for it and then didn't hear a thing for over a year. Wow. And totally forgot about it. And he called me up one day and said, the ship's in San Diego, can you come down and interview at lunch? And and I went down there and they hired me and asked me if I could start the next Monday. I think that was like a Thursday. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I moved right onto the ship and uh, got to dive like within a few days. That's so amazing. That's, that's awesome. amazing. Really cool. and that was 1996. Wow. And I'm going out on the Alvin after this cruise. Oh, nice. And how did you make the switch from human-occupied vehicles to ROVs? Actually, when I started at Woods Hole, they wanted to cross-train. They wanted to start cross-training people between Alvin and Jason, the ROV, Woods Hole's ROV. And I ended up doing more Jason than Alvin for my first couple of years. And, uh, yeah, when I switched back and forth. And I think I've been here like as a contractor and then I've been an employee for five years. So I think probably eight or nine years, I guess I've been coming out with OET. Yeah. Cool. I love hearing everyone's stories. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So what, um, was this always your passion? Or did you... Well, electronics was my thing since right. I was a little kid, but I guess I was always into the ocean, too. Uh, my dad bought me scuba certification for my 15th birthday because he, oh. wow. he, was, he was worried I was going to kill myself because I was taking <laughs> a, 
a Sears air compressor and just sticking the hose in my mouth. Oh my God. <laughs> that explains a lot which, about you which now. It does actually work, but it's not a very smart thing to do. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Yikes. Do not try these at home. Wow. Don't try this at home. Don't try that at home. Not recommended. <laughs> All right, thank you so oh, much. Um, oh, oh. Goes. thank you so much um, so for answering. For and then we leaders. have our Atlanta pilot from Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, s I started my background um, actually was in marine science, uh, focusing mostly on ichthyology, uh, which is the study of sharks, rays, and chimeras. Um, and then with my work, uh, I ended found myself out on boats, kind of doing a, a field biologist uh, job uh, for the fisheries department. And then, uh, yeah, I ended up getting really interested in working on boats, uh, especially my own sailboats or friend's sailboats and doing repairs and kind of just operating them and uh, kind of slowly move from the field scientist to field scientist slash equipment uh, repair person to boat repair person to uh, getting really good at uh, as as uh, friends say I'm really good at throwing things overboard off of a <laughs> off of a ship uh, which doesn't sound hard but the hard part is is getting them back and I have gotten really good at putting large uh, cumbersome objects overboard and then retrieving them as well so um, end up with a lot of different trainings and certifications from uh, scuba certification to dunker training, uh, which is uh, uh, ditching aircraft uh, in water and uh, getting out of it. It's one of the oh, wow. NOAA certifications that I went through uh, to being a commercial, well, a small commercial uh, free diving slash scuba uh, marine debris removal person uh, and then got more into like hydraulics and and doing some of the uh, the sensors on some of the stuff that I was putting overboard I applied for OET uh, about a year ago now and uh, didn't hear anything back from them uh, so I emailed again uh, asking to update my resume and I'm and getting a phone call and talking with them and two days later I found myself out on uh, on my first uh, cruise. Wow. <laughs> Sensing a pattern. Yeah, right. Patience is kind of yeah. key yeah. here. <laughs> yep. So, uh, yeah, and, and uh, that's for where I'm here now as a uh, lead deck chief and then they started uh, putting me uh, and training me in the roles of uh, the ROV, so a lot of uh, the hydraulic work and uh, just learning about uh, fiber optics and terminations and the uh, I've already had some of the, the electrical work uh, previously, but yeah, just learning little bits and pieces here and there as I go. Thank you. And then can you, um, I know you, you do work down at um, Antarctica. Can you speak a little bit about your work there? Yeah, uh, I worked down in Antarctica for about six years. Um, I was a marine technician down there, um, basically doing the similar stuff uh, that I do on the back deck of overboarding. Uh, equipment but also having to engineer uh, mounts brackets repair a lot of scientific equipment uh, that would show up down there uh, and then small vessel operator uh, and teaching people on how to operate a vessel who've never who've never been in a boat before let alone operated one uh, and then while i was down there i was also the lead for their ocean search and rescue team uh, at one of the stations and uh, one of their firefighters as well so kind of uh, when you when you go down there you're not just one specific role you are a multitude of different roles right so, yeah and thank now I'm up here <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much yeah and then of course uh, we would love to hear from our lead video engineer we call him Zoom in Dave. <laughs> zoom in Dave. <laughs> Here I am. Zoom in Dave. Um, I learned to zoom at a very early age. <laughs> <laughs> zoom in Dave. 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 Zoom in D
Zooming has always been my passion. They say he came out zooming. I like Bob. I was uh, always very interested in electronics. Uh, I built things when I was a kid. I got my ham license when I was 14. Uh, I was uh, when I uh, was in high school. I started taking uh, I started taking an electronics uh, shop class. Uh, that was purported to teach electronics, and I knew more than the teacher, mm -hmm. uh, and could have taught the class myself. So I transferred to a wood shop instead. But uh, I started taking trade school uh, electronics classes at a local uh, vocational technical school uh, at night, uh, three nights a week. Uh, I got high school credit for them. I got college credit for them as well uh, from a local community college. So by the time I graduated, I'd had. Uh, graduated high school, I had the first uh, year of uh, trade school. Um, I started out uh, then at a community college to take the second year of trade school and they wouldn't transfer the credits. So I, like a dummy, I kept taking electronics classes and mm -hmm. until somebody finally decided that I could get a certificate. I continued uh, when I moved to Anchorage, Alaska, uh, which is a whole another story. Uh, but I did, uh, I did uh, two years of, uh, of trade school, uh, electronics technology, uh, it took four years to do that, but I did, uh, and uh, got a uh, second-class FCC license, uh, radio telephone license. Walked into a TV station that was uh, that I picked because it was three blocks from my house, and uh, they had an AM station, an FM station, and a TV station all in the same place. And I figured they must need somebody uh, with a second-class license. And I walked in and uh, presented myself to the chief engineer, and he said, "When can you start?" And, wow! Uh, so I started. That was uh, 45 years ago. Uh, I've been working in the broadcast industry ever since. Uh, I'm uh, the dumbest guy on the boat. Uh, no, I do absolutely you are not. not. not you are not. I, Come on, I work with Dave. I work with all of these brilliant people that have degrees and advanced degrees and doc doctorates, and there are professors at universities, and I learn so much from you guys, and it's so much fun uh, doing this, but I don't have a degree in anything. Uh, it's, uh, you I got a degree in rockin', awesomeness. Rockin', oh, thank you, Mike. That's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> rockin' my high school diploma and a couple of years of trade school. Here I am. Um, uh, and, you know, I've, I've worked uh, in television stations. I've worked for networks. I've worked, uh, done uh, any kind of uh, sport that you can think of, live production of. I've done live news, satellite uplinks. Um, wow. Gosh, you name it. Uh, the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver. Ooh, uh, nice. worked on that. Wow, that's um, amazing. That kind of stuff. But when I worked at the University of Washington, uh, I was the uh, uh, I was an engineer at the campus TV station, and my boss came back from a meeting with the oceanography department, and said that they were interested in supporting an HD camera on an ROV, uh, and that was early days. It was 2005. Uh, early days of HD video, uh, we had some HD video capability. So they kind of came to us and said, uh, how could we handle this HD video and could we record it somehow and could we see it on a monitor and things like that. Uh, I ended up going out on uh, the University of Washington ship, the Thompson. Uh, there was, uh, uh, Jason was on board from Woods Hole. There was a pilot named Robert Waters uh, <laughs> that was on that, on that ship in 2005, uh, flying Jason. Uh, we put uh, a, a uh, uh, HD camera just like the ones that we have here on Herc uh, and uh, on, on Jason that time, and I recorded uh, HD video for, uh, uh, for the university uh, on videotape, as a matter of fact. Wow. Yeah, boxes and boxes of wow. videotape. I spent two and a half weeks out on the ship. What doing kind that. of videotape? Was it the Hi8? No, no. It was uh, Sony, H, uh, Sony um, HD cam. Oh, HD cam. Yeah. Yep. Big tapes, 90 minutes at Big a time. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Uh, that got me interested in oceanography, and I worked with the oceanography department on and off. I didn't go back out on the ship, but I did help them refine their system uh, and uh, brought some others into the fold. and. Uh, that kind of stuff, and uh, also tweaked their satellite system on board the uh, on board the Thompson. Also, satellite engineer. I did all the satellite engineering for that 2005 uh, uh, mission, and uh, you know I did the first uh, live HD over IP uh, live show from a ship at sea. Cool. Ever. Was that uh, a John Delaney? Sure was. Thing? Yep. 
So you yep. part you of John some, uh, uh, poetry dream. readings in? Yep. <laughs> yep. Since I'm from Alaska, he asked me to read a Robert W. Service poem, uh, my favorite. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was great. So uh, I ended up leaving the university a few years later, uh, handed uh, the uh, oceanography department uh, Ed McNichol, who I also worked with at the at the time. Ed and I worked together on and off several different places, uh, followed each other around met in Alaska, actually, and uh, worked together there. Uh, and he took over going out on the Thompson. That got him going out on other vessels as well. Uh, a few years later, he called me and said, hey, you ready to go back to sea? And uh, I said, yeah. And he said, well, I was talking to Allison, and that would be Allison Fundus, uh, who uh, runs uh, OET these days uh, for Dr. Ballard. And uh, uh, Allison said, uh, you know, we'd like to talk about a new video system for the Nautilus. And Ed said, uh, I'd be happy to uh, come up with a design, but I need to hire Dave Robertson. And I had worked with Allison at the University of Washington when she was there, uh, working for uh, John Delaney and Deb Kelly. And uh, she said, that's great, bring Dave in. So uh, brought me in, and uh, I went out on the Nautilus for the first time in 2018 and uh, with the old video system. And then we designed a new video system. We built it, and we're sitting in it today. Wow. Woohoo. And it's wow, very, that's amazing. very impressive and very nice. Yes, it's very inspiring. Thank you. Um, we we worked long and hard uh, to make this, and it was all based on uh, experience that you know that we'd had on this and other ships, and we brought a whole range of people in, the ROV uh, uh, but one team of the and the science team. And go ahead, Adam. Oh, I was just going to say one of the things that I keep hearing in everyone's stories and that the chat may be interested in is there's this network, you know, within the ocean science community. Right. And, and so it's, if you want to get into this, it's really important to kind of get out there and, and meet all these people because there's like webs and webs of connections right. between everyone and, uh, and opportunities come up and, and they need help for this or that. So, uh, Definitely just jump in, you know? Yeah, and once you meet people, stay in touch. Yeah. Um, you never know when an opportunity is going to come by, but if someone remembers that you're keen on getting involved and hands-on experience, there's they may reach out. And maybe have a go bag packed, apparently. Two days. Thank you so much. And then, okay, second row. Paula, you want to start us off? Yeah, can you repeat that question? Yes, of course I can. Um, so Thank how did you get this job? And um, can you talk about your training, qualifications, experience um, oh. that led you here today? Of course. OK, so I got this opportunity through an internship. That's what I started out. Um, usually the application, I think, was like five essays. But like, well, they were not that long. And But I did apply the last day. I was like, oh. This is a long shot, but here we go. <laughs> so I, I'm very excited to be here and yeah. and change <laughs> uh, and change my major without telling anybody uh, except my <laughs> twin. So I went and I changed my major to marine science, and um, it was it was really interesting. It was so it was out of my comfort zone for sure. Um, but our class there were only one, two, five marine science students and over 200 students in my graduating class. Oh, wow. The rest of them um, would take uh, business, uh, pursue law, um, and literature. Um, but in my time with, American, um, with that ASCC, I was part of the Marine Options Program, also known as MOP. Um, I was a marine science intern, so during the, su um, during, uh, the summer, we would set up um, buoys or trackers in the Pango Harbor to track currents and temperature for the agencies, the government agencies at that time. Um, also during the summer, I had the awesome opportunity to uh, intern with the National Park when we would go out to the back islands and we were con trying to control the number of the Acanthaster plant side, the crown of thorns uh, starfish. So we will try to uh, eradicate them, essentially. Um, not entirely as a species, but control their numbers uh, just to protect our corals as well. 
Um, so it was a fun time. It was really fun. We got to free dive. We got to see, I really got to see a lot of um, what the field work is like. And so I fell in love with that. I, I told myself, I don't want to be in an office. I don't want to sit in an office. I want to be out in the field. I want to get my hands dirty and um, yeah. And then I had a chance when I graduated ACC, I pursued, I went to UH Hilo and um, pursued the same, same degree. And uh, with marine science, I got to also join MOP, Marine Options Program and Quest as well, the quantitative ecological surveying technique, techniques class. I got to learn a lot of techniques of how to survey and um, log, log data. So upon returning home after UH Hilo, um, I was also able to learn a bit, not much, about seafloor mapping. I got to, um, I was partnered with a mentor at the Marine and Wildlife Agency back home and she taught me about a little bit about seafloor mapping. Um, but I'm coming here on Nautilus, I've learned so much from Deb. Um, when I got to talk to her, it was, it's amazing. I'm learning so much and more um, about the field. And so when I returned back home about two years ago, I um, decided to use my degree uh, to teach. So I decided to get into the um, DOE program and now I teach marine science and biology to my students. And um, I got here through uh, the National Marine Sanctuary of American Samoa Educator Coordinator, um, Beth. She sent me an email and I was hesitant at first because I knew, I don't know, a little bit of self-doubt, you know, honestly, in the journey. Um, we had amazing people apply, but I, I just applied. Um, and I got through the interview. Um, I think about, oh, I think it was a month or two later. I was like, oh, okay. Okay, I'll apply again next year. <laughs> Until I got the um, email that says, congratulations, acceptance. You guys don't know how much I screamed in my classroom <laughs> that day. I was so happy. Um, so I held that information for about like a week before telling my family. And everybody's so proud. A I'm, week? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had to revel in the feeling, you know oh what I mean? God. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah but on my twin, I told my twin, I told my twin. Um, but yeah, I held it um, to myself for quite some time. And now I'm here. I'm really grateful to be here. Um, everything that I'm learning um, from you, from you folks, has been life-changing. I can't wait to go back home and write out my lesson plans for the new year and, and teach um, the next generation of American oh, Samoa. Awesome. What I've learned from you've the been, Nautilus. You've been so. killing it in the SCF seat. I got to Ah, thank you. you. Thank you. It's a team effort. I wouldn't have been killing it without you guys for sure. For I sure. Some, I got some follow-up questions, though. Mm -hmm. uh, is the MOP program grown since you were in it? You yeah. Since five when yep, you did it? Yep. Now, um, after we graduated, now there's, it gradually grew from like five uh, and then next year is about 10, 15, 20 plus students. Wow. Um, but when we nice. started, it was we were the only, you know what I mean? Like everybody was in their own corner, but the little marine science class yeah. click was just like talking about transects and quadrats <laughs> and like species ID. It was a fun time. It was really interesting. But yeah, there was only five of us in our graduating class. And then... Did your sister get the business degree? Nope, we no. both. No. no one did. Oh, you no. both rebelled. No one yeah. did. <laughs> so this is this is what happened. So we told we told each other, okay, you can go write your own schedule. Don't tell me. Um, we'll, we'll write our own schedule separately. We'll come back together and then compare. So we did that. And so we came back and showed each other our papers. We chose the same class. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so we decided to go with marine science. Um, she also rebelled. Uh -huh. <laughs> Two peas in a pod, inseparable. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, I'm really uh, grateful that I, I decided to, 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 you know, to rebel and have a good time. <laughs> and and yeah. what's the, what's the family business? Oh, so. We have, we're in the hotel industry back home. Oh. Um, cars, gas station, um, 
rental properties, oh, real this estate. is going to be a big help when Nautilus uh, yeah. heads down there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, real estate, uh, yeah, our... Yeah, we, we do have um, a big family business back home. So, you know what I mean? Networking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's if you're ever in the area, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's me. Thank you so much, team. Um, wow, we go to port next week, Tuesday, honestly. A little bit of a, a side note, P.S. I'll miss you guys for sure, but I wish you guys all the best um, in your future cruises. Um, so, let's talk. Let's answer some questions from chat. Did um, anyone tell you about land sickness? <laughs> land si <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, is that a thing? It uh -huh. is a thing. Oh, yeah. Doc Wait, Doc. what? When you get off the ship, now that you're all used to this motion now, you're going to be like, oh. Yeah. When no, you get on land. really? Yeah. It's especially bad in the shower. Yeah. yeah. Wait, but how long does it <laughs> last? It's not like, nearly as long okay, as Okay, I, I had a, you know, like, oh. I, was, I, was rocking <laughs> it for, I was rocking it for about four days. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it should, it'll go away in hours, really. Okay. For me, what? Hours land plus sickness. five days. Yeah. Uh, really? <laughs> it lasts that long? No, no, no. Oh, <laughs> oh snap. Okay. How is it, like, walking off the ship? How is it? That yeah, experience? like after being at sea for a while. Like Suddenly uh, everything's very stable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not, so you kind of keep moving the way that you would on the ship. Yeah, I can't walk a straight line. <laughs> yeah. Walk across the dock, veer this way and that way. Yeah. What? It's even worse when oh I come back boy. to town, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> so usually, usually in the shower, like when you go to wash your hair and you close yeah. your eyes, that, yeah. yeah. It's falling on the wall. Fall over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why I don't shower. For <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. these ten days. <laughs> Over Just sure again. Sure Safety <laughs> first. <laughs> Come on. Oh, okay. Line sickness. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All and right. We got this. Let's go. I heard oh, it's not go. that common. It's not that common. It's happened. It's Maybe Brian I told me that too. I don't get seasick, me. but I get. Dock rock every single Dock time. Yeah, oh, every time. God. Maybe it's like if you don't get one, you get the other. Dock uh, rock. Dock rock. <laughs> Dark rock. Annie, regarding our, your previous question, one thing about the Nautilus that I really admired, that back home when I was an undergrad, um, I realized that we don't have a lot of educational programs back home to, right, learn, right. to learn about the marine sciences. So with my nonprofit, we started an internship, and we've been going for over three years now. And that's the class that we were able to connect. We shipped to Short Connection this morning, which we're all really excited. Oh, so Ooh. cool. So I love how everything comes around and mm. just learning the educational outreach that the Nautilus does and all the effort, effort it encompass. It's just amazing. And hopefully I will be able to translate some of that back home. But awesome. Yes, I really admired that about the Nautilus too, type from the science we made. I do want to talk to you. Um, I'll talk to you after about the internship because I would love to start that up in American Samoa as well. Yes, um, definitely. That would be wow. That's amazing. Yeah, and if anyone's uh, watching at home who uh, is a teacher or an educator or works with students, uh, we do open. We have ship to shore interaction signups available um, 24/7 across uh, all the time zones. Uh, until December, so that's all that information and sign up information is available on the Nautilus I website under the education tab. Thank you so much. Um, find out more information on nautiluslive.org. So, uh, we have a question from chat. This is about um, environmental issues. Um, so, how do y'all deal with climate anxiety and grief as environmental scientists or workers? When oh, we're out exploring, that's a tough question. question. So yeah. nostalgia. Yeah. Have you guys heard this term? No. You all heard this term? So nostalgia is like the oh, opposite yeah. of nostalgia, and it's the it's somewhat recently coined term. That's the um, the feeling of like grief or uh, wistfulness that's associated with climate change and environmental destruction. Mm -hmm. Wow. How do we deal with it it's out really here? Tough with, yeah, with climate I mean, anxiety. I have to say, it definitely motivated my career path and a lot of like the organizations I've gotten involved with. Um, so I think you, it's, <laughs> it is very depressing. Um, mm -hmm. 
and I think I think about it a lot because I'm in environmental science and marine science and we all do but um, I think you have to channel it and and do what you can with that um, yeah I think you know there where there's a generational change kind of happening that that the folks that you know it's really frustrating to see the lack of forward progress on these issues um, and you know us as scientists we're probably kind of hyper informed about all of this uh, and maybe have felt like you know, unusual and being so well informed and, and that kind of thing. But I think that's changing. I think kind of current younger generation, it is more uh, kind of the norm to be really aware and concerned than it has been in any, any previous generation. So I'm pretty optimistic about, uh, you know, hopefully the world coming together to make some significant changes it's it's a really hard problem but one thing as a geologist who thinks about time scales of tens and hundreds of millions of years i you can be worried for us as humans but not for the earth the earth's right. gonna be just fine <laughs> you know it's, <laughs> it's gonna make it through okay and even these organisms down in the deep sea are you know pretty isolated from a lot of the effects of of global climate change so there's parts of the planet and the plan itself is going to be okay. It's just maybe us who are going to suffer the consequences and of our actions. Many, many, many species. Yeah. Well, who already have, you know, yeah. like, absolutely. Definitely. Yep. Back where I work, we have a saying that is like, oh, saving the world, one coral at a time, mm -hmm. where we Aww. restore. Yeah. And yeah, I think that ensembles are, like you said, like maybe focus on what you concentrate on, what you can do yeah. to towards the the issue and that gives us hope yeah i think also like uh it's there it is pretty it is a very dire situation but um i think it's also important to look for the positive news because there that is very true you know there there are also good things happening and there is hope and like they're finding that shallow corals are more resilient than we thought and that's also really important i mean if we were to just like throw up our hands and give up then we'd really have no shot i think that's super important like we often talk about the ocean in these very um negative terms you know like the the microplastics is you know choking the ocean and the you know giant garbage patch and the ocean's heating up the ocean is not a threat to us it's a it's an ally you know if we if we work with the ocean um, it's going to help us out of you know the problems that that we've created but it, right. you know ha we have to not look at it as a as a resource or something or a bank or anything like that we have to look at it as a as a friend and an ally Well, this is the, our heaviest watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's World Ocean Day. I like it's yeah. World Ocean Happy Day. Happy World <laughs> Ocean Day, everybody. Yeah, that's a great uh, speech, Adam, for mm -hmm. Ocean Day. Mm -hmm. On a positive note, um, the oceans are very much interconnected with global cycles. And so anything that you can do in your backyard will, in some small way, help oh, the ocean. The whole so. planet, yeah. There are things that you can do. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone's sort of just like <laughs> deep in thought now. Yeah. <laughs> it is so important though to like find joy in in what is still here and yeah, appreciate right. it. Um, I think about um, something that I saw on um, actually on Twitter from a scientist who writes um, poetry called Crypto Naturalist, and it, something about um, like when you see a spider in your house, instead of being afraid or trying to get rid of it, like thank it for being here still and like appreciate that it's still here. Um, which I thought was kind of a poetic way of thinking about how we can celebrate what's what's still here, even though we have seen such massive changes in our lifetimes and we'll continue to see a lot of 
massive changes both in you know climate and weather, species biodiversity. I'm not sure that person saw the spiders they have in American Samoa. Oh yeah, <laughs> nah, nah, for real though, for real. Like I had, I had, like we, yeah, we have to fight land spiders and now okay. sea spiders. Well, like come on, no. <laughs> at least sea spiders are like. There, wait, there are no sea spiders on shallow reefs because we don't have them back home, right? I'm talking about like spiders in your house, y'all. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But you know what I mean? Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Insert a bug of choice. Yeah. I know some people have some spider issues. I have no, spider. No. I have Not spider you. issues. I don't do spiders. Like encountering a like Keep brown bear away. in the woods and being like, "Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Run." And things in your house and so okay. a sterile box. <laughs> Tough crowd. <laughs> I actually really appreciate the sentiment, and I agree. Oh I think as long as the spiders are not big, we like them back home because <laughs> they eat the mosquitoes well, and yeah, the lizards exactly. too. Yeah. We appreciate that. Burn the whole island. <laughs> 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 the real reason comes out why you're in New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Nope. All right. And then, well, we okay, I kind of lost my train of thought. Okay, uh, well, this is kind of uh, another question. Well, thank you, team. Um, this is for you, Adam. I th this is an interesting question about um, from our viewer who was viewing, who was tuning in earlier. Uh -huh. I saw Adam uh, walk into the lab after the last dive with his arms in the air and floppy <laughs> hands. What was that gesture? <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing? It, please, <laughs> what yeah, were you doing? This? It was this, no, no, it's just because the What's lab, that? the lab team has a, a team nickname of Pit Vipers, <laughs> <laughs> and so that's the sign for Pit Vipers. Did you create it? Yes, I just created it when I, you saw the moment of creation. Wow. <laughs> Everything is on display here in Nautilus. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was our f um, friends from the Netherlands. Yeah. yeah. So that's pit viper. Wait, why pit vipers? Because uh, <laughs> Leela has these really funky sunglasses. Oh. And she told me that they were called pit vipers, <laughs> which is, or they were like pit vipers, which some sunglasses from the 80s that like, you know, you'd see like uh, Hulk Hogan wearing or something oh, like that. Oh, okay. Like these big You're right, wrap right. around kind of neon <laughs> things and so I was okay. so they so they created a team name Bit Vipers <laughs> oh, <laughs> <that's good. laughs> and that was symbol too <laughs> so every so it is super fun on the ship okay. like the people are it great is. it really is and true. they totally put up with me even when I say Pit Viper and make <laughs> hand signs <laughs> Okay, so every section of the ship has their own name, every group? N not until Everyone. I get there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need a name for, was the mapping crew have a name? Map it all. Map it no, all. that's actually, never mind. That's actually something <laughs> else. That's something um, else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think the mapping team has one this year. We've, we had it in the past. Time for you to visit the mapping team. They yeah. no, they have what they do is they start to go crazy and they see things <laughs> in bathymetry and they have a like That's wall true. of fame of <laughs> things that look like cats and things that look like Clams. faces. Yeah. Oh Pieces wow. Of toast. Very funny. Monorail cat. <laughs> Fist bump. Yeah. Oh wait, today was the award ceremony for rock cutting. It was. So wait, wait what? what? Yeah. You got certificates. What? We yeah, got to it's, it's down in the lounge. Yours is oh, okay. In the lounge. Oh, I didn't know that. Samantha, Wait, did you cut around? Gonna, not this year. I was going to take okay, a, we're gonna a bathroom have break. Turn. Should I go grab Annie's? Yeah, yeah. Please, please. Where in the lounge oh. is it? Uh, on the bench in front of the TVs. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll be back shortly. Adam, can I get a certificate from like 2018? <laughs> 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 no. Nope. You got to cut a new rock. But we're going to have a special mapping team session because <laughs> no one on the mapping team has cut a rock. Yet. Perfect. That's awesome. We're going to have to get a lot of rocks tonight <laughs> or cut them up into very small pieces. You cut a rock? What? I have not cut a rock yet. I missed my, I'd my, love my own to cut ceremony. A rock. 
I was going to say, you look pretty wistful it over there. It was so special. It was at <laughs> sunset <laughs> and Adam. Yeah, at sunset speech. Gave us speech. <laughs> no. no, Adam. No. no room for Mike, Adam? No. Well, of course <laughs> there is. No room, yeah. for, no room for deck chiefs. No. Or ROVs. No, no, we'll have a whole, a whole session. And then how was it that you got inspired to give us the names for the awards? Uh, yeah, so every... <laughs> Uh, uh -oh. Every, uh -oh. every certificate uh -oh. comes with a different title. <laughs> the Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I, I went through my list of ti like weird titles that I could think of, and then I ran out, and then I found a website that will <laughs> oh generate gosh. weird titles. Are we talking right? about like, like a lawyer being like an esquire? Like, or, or yeah. Are we so we have <laughs> a, a okay. you know, a potentate, a oh, elven no. princess. Uh, okay. what, what was yours? Oh, Prime Minister. Prime Minister. <laughs> Prime Minister. Uh, Wait, I'm going to look at mine when I get my certificate. Oh, Are they all signed by the Urchin King? They're signed by the two science leads and the expedition lead. It looks very <laughs> official. Oh, my. Yeah. Wow. And it's not but like copy and paste. That's, that's or cool. Sign it. But did you sign it Urchin King? No. Okay. Well, you can't read my signature, so <laughs> it could say Maybe. Urchin King. <laughs> Yeah, this is going in my professional portfolio, that's why. <laughs> yeah. Suitable for framing. Yeah, I'm, I'm framing it when I get back home. <laughs> <laughs> they, I once before made a certificate for wax coring, which is like <laughs> dropping a, a gravity core with surf wax on the end to pick up rocks. <laughs> and <laughs> the I made we made it for called the Voxen Smosher <laughs> you know, certificate or something. And I worked with the guy like 15 years later, and it was like in his Zoom screen. It was taped up behind yes. him. <laughs> That's awesome. That was on the Western Flyer, the Aww. Ambari ship. Yeah. Nice. But the Doc Ricketts, that was the first time I'd ever seen like the pointer stick with the stuffed glove <laughs> on the end of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Robert, you still making forklift certificates? I saw I you? saw Robert's forklift certificate. <laughs> <laughs> it is it said something like you've now <laughs> become a member of an elite group. <laughs> yeah. We getting any deck certificates? Crane operator? Not uh, not certificate? I could do uh, not certificates, yeah. Not certificates, back deck uh Tugger certificates. Oh, yeah. Tugger. Tugger racer. <laughs> oh, Daisy Chain. Daisy yeah. Chain Elite. Yeah. Drew still holds the, the record. I know. Can break it. Let's well, say. the tether's longer, too, now. By chance, will you be doing another knot class? I am. I will do yes, another goal. knot okay. class uh, on the way north. Okay. And then it'll be a kind of a review for those who attended the first one. Um, and give a chance for those who weren't able to <laughs> attend to do oh. that. And then I will uh, I'll do like the monkey's fist as a more advanced. Oh, uh, yes. So. Monkey's fist. Don't you have to, what if we put, you have to put some inside, right? No, not necessarily. Oh, but we have a bunch of little manganese pebbles. I mean, we could definitely put those inside. Um, yeah. Very cool. <laughs> so knots on the way north. <laughs> Oh, this is so precious. <laughs> I'm so happy. Wait, what title did you get? Um, so this certifies that Annalise Halleck has achieved the rank of Rock Saw Superstar. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> wow. Kochi, Kochi. Really, they, it really does look professional. This is going in my, prof my prof it professional has portfolio. It signed <laughs> by the <laughs> yeah. chief scientist. Annie, do you want to have uh, Jules hold that up in front of the camera so the world can oh, see? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, tilt, wow. tilt it this forward. One? Tilt it forward a little bit so it doesn't shine. There we go. Perfect. Look okay. at that. Nice. Look at that. All Beautiful. The oh, I'm so happy. Can you <laughs> see it? No, uh, it's not. We don't see the uh, feed. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> nice. I thought I had that camera up. My oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Oh, right. there we go. Adam gets a junior video engineer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right, hold on. Keep I'll that camera Thank on. You. I'll be out Because uh, here is the. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Reserves. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. You earned it. Star. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yes. Okay. Oh, well, our chat is asking, um, uh, Dave, as the video engineer, are you responsible for the video from Argus and Atalanta, as well as Hercules? Uh, somewhat. The, okay. the actual hardware and the transport uh, is in the ROV realm, uh, and how it gets up the cable and the electronics on, on board the uh, vehicles, uh, that kind of stuff. I have uh, remote control over those cameras here, and once the video comes uh, into the van, then I have responsibility for it. It goes into our distribution system. Uh, I send it to recorders to be recorded, monitors to be viewed, uh, and uh, we, we have monitors all over the ship that we send video to uh, so that people down in the lounge, in the data lab, uh, up on the bridge uh, can see any of the uh, cameras both on the vehicles or any of the cameras that we have on the ship. Uh, cameras pointing at the back deck and, uh, and all around. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, the video engineer, there's three of us uh, on board. I'm the lead. We have a lead in training named Amber Flynn. We have uh, a, uh, a video intern named uh, Daryl Tote, and uh, they've been. I've been training them, and uh, they uh, they sit a watch as well. Uh, another one of the the uh, Nautilus uh, or OET intern uh, possibilities for uh, folks out there that are interested in video, uh, video engineering, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, we bring you on board, and uh, the. Second time that you're uh, on watch, uh, first time that you're on watch uh, on an ROV dive, I'll sit behind you and uh, show you what to do the second time. You're going to be doing it yourself, pushing the buttons. I'll still sit behind you and help out, that kind of stuff. So it's uh, a real hands-on uh, uh, operation where you're pushing the buttons and feeding the cameras uh, to the recorders, to the monitors, uh, and then uh, monitoring everything to make sure that, uh, that it's all working right, and then fixing it when it breaks. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then, um, what's our uh, ETA, please, for our viewers tuning in? 13 minutes 13 and minutes. 24 seconds. Thank you. We'll start the top clocks. Um, chat, this is our last dive. But not our last watch. Not our last watch. True. Last dive. So this dive is about 24 hours um, at a max depth of 2440. And we have new viewers tuning in. Um, as a first-time visitor, as a non-professional deep sea biology and geology enjoyer, I find it difficult to find ways to stay up to date on recent discoveries. Any advice on where to stay up to date? Um, definitely um, nautiluslive.org. Uh, we do post updates. Um, but any other advice on where to find more information? On discoveries? Um, huh. That's interesting. I mean, um, there's a bunch of places I go to look, but not like one place. Right. I I look at Science Daily. Science Daily. Um, and you can search within Science Daily to look at different topics. Like you can look at climate, geology, global warming, biology, etc. So or you can just email Juliana, and she'll <laughs> keep you abreast of everything that's happening. <laughs> chat so please check out um science daily and keep up with um our dives and our crews um on nautiluslive.org we will be posting more information as um well after each dive um so stay tuned and check back real soon and um, what were some of the welcome spots here. that you had mentioned sorry Annie. thanks for tuning in no 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 problem go ahead uh you know I guess big meetings are a place, like the Ocean Science meeting and AGU meeting. There'll be a bunch of kind of stories that will come out from that on the latest developments. And then um, looking through, you know, journals will send out their kind of like what's been published this, this month kind of stuff. Um, but sometimes it's just on uh, kind of Twitter or social media stuff will get posted about new discoveries. But there's so much bogus science, you know? Yeah, but if you follow, like, known places like yeah. Hui and Mbari and OET and stuff, Trusted you'll, sources. Yeah, you'll, you'll find the good stuff. I'll also set, well, when I was managing communications, I was setting a lot of Google alerts for keywords. So if there were specific species I wanted to track or, um, you know, like hydrothermal vents or, mm -hmm. yeah, it's easy to set 
up those as well through different search platforms. Thank you. Um, thanks for answering um, our viewers' question. And um, is there any, is it in the possible future, is it possible, in the near future, is it possible to buy Nautilus t-shirts? Unfortunately not. This, they are um, sorry, available to folks for sailing on oh, board. Thank you, thank you. So, depends how much you're willing to pay. I got a couple. <laughs> Yeah, Adam's trying to get more you, snacks for this next few days. I know. <laughs> He's been giving away clothes. <laughs> uh, I already traded a shirt away for yeah. some sparkling, sparkling water. water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our supplies are running low here. Mm. <laughs> our snack supplies. We have we yeah. have plenty of food in the galley. We're passing something now. No more fresh vegetables, but yeah. Yeah, we transitioned to carrots today. Yeah. And purple cabbage. I do like the purple mm -hmm. cabbage. Uh, but it wasn't there. I missed the regular oh. cabbage. Okay. <laughs> oh. Wow. Almost jumped out of the seat. Hopefully that would be considered chat. Chat is saying, please make Thank some you, merch. We will love to Thank buy. You. It does seem mm. like a, a good opportunity. Well. Oh, and I have gotten this um, question quite a few times over our cruise. Um, okay, I'll tell you what ripples are. <laughs> 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 our viewers are wondering um, why don't we use YouTube um, to answer question? Why is it only the website? Oh, uh, interesting. That would be really overwhelming. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because there's, yeah. yeah and it does, there is like definitely some, you have to be intentional to go to the website and right. ask questions. Yeah. So maybe it's a bit of a filter for kind of bots and things like that. Right, right. Annie also does a wonderful job of filtering questions and asking us the, the most relevant questions. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Jules. Thanks, Annie. Into the pressure zone here. <coughs> oh Pressure's boy! Pressure on. zone. Yeah, where we get the a little bit of hydraulic <coughs> funkiness. I kind of choked on the beef jaw. Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Thank you. Um, for everyone tuning in, um, we are currently almost to the bottom. We have descended uh, to explore the deep southern flank and summit of Geo 10. Um, our expected dive duration is about 24 hours with a max depth of 24, 40 meters. Um, if you are new and you have missed our previous dives, not to worry. Our amazing team uploaded um, our highlights on nautiluslive.org. Nautilus so check out those highlights. The recent highlight is, um, check it out. It's our team. Um, our team recovering are getting the uh, four whale fossil bones. So check out Nautilus Live for those highlights. And if you keep checking back, I bet that uh, Dumbo octopus is probably going to make it yeah. into the Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> we had a really cool dive. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Was that this morning? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. <laughs> was a great dive. <laughs> I hope we see the Dumbo again. Did other watches um, talk to you guys about what they saw on their watch after we left? It was only one more watch. It's, yeah. It was just the 12 to 4, right? And oh, right, right. I don't know. I don't know what they what they saw.
80 meters. So we got a 24 hour dive ahead of us. We're gonna have to be a little more judicious with our sampling. I remember at the end of the dive, that last mm -hmm. long dive, we had nothing left. Yeah. So how's the sampling meters. today? How's the wet lab? There was only three samples that came up because oh, okay. of a short dive, so oh. I think it was Pit Vipers had a Wait. had light work. <laughs> Were the three samples all from us? We did at least <laughs> two. Did we I remember did one. Did we do a C pen, a push core, and a Niskin? Oh, oh yeah. No, uh, no, there I was another one. Today? I think there were there are three samples today. plus the Niskin. Plus the Niskin. Okay. Wait. <laughs> did we get the bamboo coral too on the front porch? Oh yeah, we did. Oh uh, yeah, we got the tree. We got all the samples. <laughs> <laughs> Forty meters. Forty meters, chat. Thirty three meters. So what do we think? Gonna Are we going to see there. rocks? No, coming down. Yep. Sediment? Sand. Well, I can oh. already see the bottom of the bottom. Well, stop. <laughs> I'll stop. I'll yeah. stop. <laughs> yep. I'll stop. We have reached. I'm bottom. All right. So we're, I'm going to head back to you. Okay. You can just go auto head on. Yep. On auto head's on. Switching over to you, uh, Dudrek. Who is making this happen? Resetting the USB DVL. Okay. That looks accurate. Accurate enough. Is there any way to evaluate this on deck? I know we talked about not pressurizing the system, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you do it. Yeah. <coughs> Gonna need all the hydraulic pressure you can get for ONC, I would assume. C pig. How yeah, deep is like uh? Oh right, it might not be that Endeavor. deep. Yeah. They're in it. They're going to Endeavor. Yeah. P dives are at least. Do we know how deep that is? That's huh. like fifteen or something. Look at that. Oh. Sounds wow. Likely. Still, come has some stunning pictures. Oh, nice. So eventually we'll be going uh, I think, you know, as long as we don't have the heavy current that we're battling, then I think 
It's not so bad. You know? okay. We'll be going like zero to zero, zero three zero. Endeavor is twenty two fifty meters. Oh. oh. Nope, deeper than I thought. But today we'll be going zero <laughs> zero two zero <laughs> or zero three zero. But I don't think there's that much current there, right? That uh, I've seen. Yeah, I don't think Just so. Is this another holothurian? It looks like I mean it. they're gonna be doing a lot of a lot of uh, lifting and plugging and yeah. Chat asked the question, what are the push cores made of? And what is their diameter? So they're made of polycarbonate, so a hard, clear plastic. And their diameter is about two and a half inches, I think, maybe three inches. I don't think they're that big around. No? Two, yeah, it's a little over two. A little over two. Two and a quarter ID. or something, yeah. Definitely not three. I just held my fingers up and I'm like, they're about this big. <laughs> <laughs> and I measured it. 45 centimeters. 45 centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> Throwback. Uh, can I reset DVL again? I wish you would. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we gotta do our video camera action. Yeah, oh. I don't know what you're doing. I wish you would. <laughs> <laughs> Your wish shall be granted. <laughs> <laughs> we found the genie. <laughs> oh, it was my last wish. <laughs> Dave's just wishing for white balance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you, uh, like, can you make sure all the lights are yeah, on? Yeah, your lowers, I believe, are off. Lights are on, no one's home. Yeah. You want your P&T light? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. What's that mean? Pen and tilt. Tilt. Oh, yeah, as soon as I said it. <laughs> what happened to the tape on the crawl cutters? All right, guys, I got a trick. I'm going to make the screens go dark, okay? When I snap my <laughs> fingers. What's yeah. Going on with the weird <laughs> yeah, okay, urchin cake. Weird Hold okay. on. Turn, turn, off the, yeah. turn light. the P and T light off. P and T off. P and T off. I. P and T is off. There we go. Oh, I'm just <laughs> doing an incantation. Here. Oh, okay, okay. Got it. <laughs> This is how debunking things works. <laughs> <laughs> you good? All right, here we go. Black balance first. And now. Oh! <laughs> 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 you know, I couldn't that do it without Samantha. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Team separate. Couldn't do it without him. <laughs> like to try. <laughs> yeah, it actually requires front and back row to be synchronized in their snaps. <laughs> Just like the end of the Avengers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, white balance is saved. We are done. Thank you very much. And away we go. Let's go dark. Uh, all of a sudden. Oh, no, that's fine. Okay, we good to move? We're good back here. Yeah. Great. Dave, are you good? <laughs> Video's ready to dive. Ready to oh, dive. Wait. Too um, late. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yep, all good here. Go back.
Okay, we're gonna do zero two five for our uh, RV heading. Bridge nav. We've reached the C4, uh, so if we can try moving three zero meters, zero two five. Looks like the ship's been rock solid in its position. So science, do we have any uh, species that are still on the wish list? Um, we are, we don't have specific species necessarily that we're looking for. Um, we are hoping to, to collect samples of organisms that are characteristic of the area. So we're looking for, for patterns. Um, and then anything new, of course, any novel associates. And Chris Ma has a wish list still, but it's so long that it's like <laughs> almost everything or anything new, you know? Look at this, this looks like a fresh little landslide of sediment. Yeah. Right. Oh, is that a fish or a, or a rock? Halosaur? It's a fish, yeah. <laughs> Just. Yeah. It does look like a halosaur to me. Ship's coming up to speed. We do have a question from chat about push cores. Oh, I got that one. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what this is here. Hmm. Oh, there's a coral. Chrysogorgia. Oh. Yeah. To Nicol. Chrysogorgia to <laughs> Nicolata. <laughs> and that's our opening number. Can I get an update on how far we've gone on our... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, mm, has our average increased? 10 meters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a start. You, gotta, you can't go 1,000 without going 10. Yeah. Every journey starts with the first step. <laughs> what other inspirational posters can we... <laughs> there's with no laugh, I love. and team. <laughs> there's no... There's... There's me, One though. I and ship move. <laughs> <laughs> there's... No I in waypoint. Oh, there's an I in waypoint. <laughs> uh, oh, what's that? <coughs> to the left. Can you pan to the left a little bit? Oh, Thurian? To the Thurian? Sea mouse? Hollow Thurian. Hollow Thurian. There yep. you go. Say it with excitement. Oh, oh, there it is. Let's go. Oh, my God. There you are. Wow. Oh, my. Look I'm at so you. happy to see you. Look at you. Do we stab her? Do we stab her? Do we stab her? Do to this move. <laughs> He's talking to me. It's very happy. <laughs> He's doing the same it. thing. Oh, my God. Oh, the, it's doing other. amazing. You are wow. killing it. You're doing so good. <laughs> Perfect standard, standard issue. <laughs> amazing. This made my day. Our group has had their coffee this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone oh, say something so nice cute. to the Holothurian. Uh, the best pink. 
<laughs> for them. <laughs> yeah, great, great, um, great digestional <laughs> track. <Really>? Yeah, <laughs> really healthy. Ship moving yet? Sure is. Bird's <laughs> 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 like, get me out of here. <laughs> For everyone tuning in um, from all over the world, uh, shout out to our friends from all over the U.S., um, Hawaii, U.K., Canada, Australia, Netherlands, Finland, Germany, Turkey, Panama, New Zealand, Japan, Italy, Hong Kong, France, and Barbados. Wow. Woo. Thanks Hello, for being everyone. here as we explore Geo 10 together. Did you guys know that the reason they're called Geo is they're named after Geo Hall at Princeton University, a nice flat top building, just like the flat top seamount. There we go. Huh. Wow. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. Annie, do you know what you call a flat top seamount in Samoan? Oh. Oh, okay, hold on. It's a long way. Let me ask Google for help. Mm -hmm. I looked it up the other... I'm I talking to my um, siblings, flat tops. Tripod. Tripod. Ooh. Yeah, it's... <laughs> so it's... This is correct. Ma fola fola pito ilunga maunga. Oh. Ma, fola, fola. Pito ilunga. Pito ilunga. Maunga. Maunga. So mountain, it's in Samoan, it's called Maunga. Maunga. Yeah, and then volcano is Samo in Samoan is Maunga Mu. Maunga Mu. Maunga Mu is volcano. Nice. Do you have Thank words you. for directions that are towards the ocean and towards the mountains like they have in Hawaiian? Like oh. in Hawaiian... Uh, Malka is towards the mountains and Makai is towards the water. Oh, that's an interesting question. Oh, okay. I need to, I know we do. Okay, I need to seek the wisdom of my older sister. Mm -hmm. I shall take my first rain check of the oh, cruise. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Would you like to call a lifeline? Yeah, <laughs> yes, please, lifeline, lifeline. <laughs> so you got. A twin sister. What else you got for siblings? I have we, I, I have three siblings. Four. Well, there's four of us total. So yeah. I'm the youngest. The youngest in Samoan is Wee. Wee. Yeah. Wee. So I'm the uh, Wee of the family. So it's my sister, my older sister, and then my brother, mm -hmm. and then my twin, and then me. Wee. Wee. Mm -hmm. What are these little uh, divots here? Oh. Right. Acorn worm territory. Oh, I found Oh, please. I don't think. Oh. I don't think I have the, the authority to <laughs> suggest a zoom. <laughs> Why are they called acorn worms? I think because their head has an acorn shape, or maybe it's not their head. It's their some body part at the oh. end it has an acorn shape. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they hate squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I That's assume really they hate yes. squirrels. <laughs> I don't know for sure. <laughs> <sighs> of course, shout out to the Maldives. Thanks for being here with us. So good. So good. <laughs> has been 53 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 53 minutes since what? Since deep Our sea started. squirrels. No, it's no. been an, an hour, hour and 53 minutes. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's like the longest 53 no, no, minutes of my it's life. It's two hours, oh. right? Two, uh, it's been two, almost two hours now. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Dear. Uh -huh. <laughs> I thought you said an hour. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. I know. Everybody fell asleep while I was <laughs> telling about my 45-year career. No. <laughs> oh, you told that story? <laughs> <laughs> Again. Because <laughs> I had this crazy dream about a guy who took 
some vocational classes while he was in high school and then <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like going to get into broadcasting. Like My first job was at a radio station. Oh, I really? had a I had a radio show in high school. <laughs> oh no! Oh nice. no! Are there archives of this? Yeah, are there oh, tapes? I, I I doubt it. What we high had the school coveted did you go to? Olympia High School, but the radio show was at the Evergreen State College, and we had the coveted Sunday morning. 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. slot. Very <laughs> coveted. <laughs> what was what was their show called? I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the official the the listed name was Son of Cream of Broccoli. <laughs> 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 Son. What station was that on? T E S C. Huh. <laughs> oh no no no! I'm sorry. That's the name. That's the school. K A O S. Chaos. Wait. Chaos. Chaos crew. Wait. It is. I found it. Was it. <laughs> it was written. <laughs> what? It was prophecy. You found it? K is there an archive? Oh, you found the radio station. Yeah. Yeah. They've burned all the records. <laughs> <laughs> you have burned the all best. the records. <laughs> <laughs> That's what someone would what? say. They Catalog? don't want their records found. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Evergreen. K-A-O-S. I don't know if you mentioned this, Adam, but what was it about? It was just playing music. I mean, it was playing music and begging people to call in so we knew someone was listening. <laughs> <laughs> Complete magazine archives. Umbelula. Umbelula. Yeah, Umbelula. Somehow, I will find this. Oh, <laughs> there's really no record of it. What year was this? <laughs> <laughs> Probably like uh, 1994 to 1997. Hollow three and tracks, yeah. Oh, Rome, there's oh, a culprit. Oh, hey, look at you. You're doing it. Yep. Aww. Yep. Look at it go. So proud of hey. you, buddy. Filter. 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 <laughs> Filter. <laughs> fly, fly, fly. Every holothurian is a blessing. Oh, yeah. yeah that that's is true. That's mm -hmm. what I always Stars say. Stars are true. Have a greeting card with that on it. <laughs> I think our next step, I'm going to move a little west to get the ship closer to... Why do... Or about cards like birthday cards and all that stuff from the store why do they cost so much money why is this coming up for you right now <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point actually wait, how much <laughs> wait 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 how much does it cost where you're at well always more than i think it should like four five six dollars yeah same back home well for it I would pay four or five dollars, but sometimes they're even more than that. Like sometimes they're up to like ten. Yeah, bridge, like no? depending on how fancy it is. Yeah, and also what happened to making your own cards? Right. Could we do a three zero meter step two nine zero? Like. I guess if you think about how long it would take you to do it and how much two your nine time zero. Is worth. Yeah, but no offense to anyone who's ever given me like a, a store bought card. I don't keep them. Like, if someone makes me a card, oh, I will absolutely uh, keep it. Oh, yeah. Can you repeat that, Adam? Like, thoughtful. Antimastis. Antimastis. You remember the name? I know. This time I remembered it. Finally got it on our last dive. Nice. Just there in time. Go. For everyone tuning in, this is our last dive, but not our last watch. So stick with us as we explore Gio 10 together. Did you have like a classic like sign off or anything? Yeah, we played uh, we played a particular Mud Honey song. Mud Honey. Yeah, this was the age of grunge. Just uh, yes. How did I start? Um, I guess one of I studied bi general biology in college. Um, marine biology. Living on an island, you would think that that's pretty much something people think about, <laughs> but 
nobody talks about marine biology as a career. Right. Usually one of those, like if you're good at science, you, you should become a doctor. If you're good at this class, you should become that other thing. But marine bio biology was not on my mind. Um, so I wanted to become a doctor <laughs> up until maybe sophomore year. And then I started volunteering because I always liked the environment and conservation. So I got my scuba divers diving license and started working in coral restoration efforts as a volunteer and that's where I was like whoa this is a whole new field that I had no idea people actually worked in so mm -hmm. I started researching I remember doing a lot of googling I actually had to google like oceanography <laughs> oceanography careers <laughs> and start reading up like these different careers that actually exist and I was really excited and I wanted to explore extreme ecosystems like the furthest from Puerto Rico, I guess, as possible. Like, what's the most different year of exploration? <laughs> and so, at that point, it was the Arctic, like the polar ecosystems. Mm -hmm. So, I applied to a NOAA um, internship opportunity, which was a fellowship, and that was great because I needed help getting to pay my college degree. So, that was ex uh, I was really excited towards that opportunity, and it was the NOAA APPMSI program. And as yeah, I remember on the interview, they asked me, like, oh, what do I want to research? And I was like, I want to go to Alaska, the, the poles. And they're like, why Puerto Ricans always want to <laughs> research the poles? And I remember they, <laughs> they have interviewed other Puerto Ricans and they say the, the same, same thing. thing. Really? <laughs> yeah. Huh. And that is weird. Yes. So I'm guessing we all share that. You're all, like, too hot. You're like, I need to cool <laughs> off a little bit. I was going to say, you didn't tell them that it was cool down there? <laughs> I would have won that interview <laughs> if I said that, I, I think. But I got in, and my first internship, they were like, okay, so we don't have, like, a polar program to put you on, but we have this Office of Ocean Exploration, and the Deep Sea, you should check them out. They're, they're looking for an intern. So I read all about Ocean Exploration, and that was the first time I have heard of that. And... From there, <laughs> I've been. Sorry. You okay, Adam? I, I, I found the button on the side of the chair. I'm trying to look for the button. <laughs> yeah, from Sorry. there, I've been. Um, what did you do in that internship? Where oh, were yeah. you? I was over in Maryland in Silver Springs so, uh -huh. at their office, and I worked with Casey Canwell and Mashker Malik. They were extremely good mentors, and especially. Um, my knowledge was not that vast, but I was really excited to learn, and they were more than happy to explain all the things. I remember, <laughs> I remember like trying to manually calculate the bathymetric map. Like, if the sonar goes this distance, <laughs> <laughs> you have to calculate. <laughs> so it was a really in-depth experience, and and there I studied the distribution of the deep sea coral Lophelia pertussum. It's a hard coral, so it creates like these big mounds, and then it goes miles and miles. Wow. So they resemble like shallow water coral reef ecosystems even though they're dead they still have that big structure so by then i was all about the deep sea i wanted to find more opportunities to get involved and then i got to present that research and build a network that's extremely important and i'm really glad i was able to learn that early on the importance of networking and after that, my second internship was in Mesophotic Reef Ecosystem. It was supposed to be over at the Papahano Mokakea Marine National Monument. And I was like, okay, I have experience in shallow water, I have experience in deep sea uh, corals, and now I need the, the middle ones. <laughs> then I can <laughs> right. have the experience and choose between those three ecosystems. And then COVID came and it was a virtual experience, but still very gratifying. They had these photo mosaics uh, created, so I was able to study like the distribution of these uh, mesophotic corals there um, in a new way. So that was really cool. I got to present the research also, which was really exciting, like seeing all the parts of the research being put on. on. And yes, after that, I remember thinking that it, was, it felt always like a dream, like I can't believe I'm having these experiences. And I really wanted to get into ocean mapping. So I think one thing I would have appreciated in my bachelor's degree was just sticking to one thing. <laughs> like maybe if I wanted to study corals, <laughs> stay there because maybe I would have gotten more experience towards that and be a little bit more advanced in some ways. But I, I don't forget any decision. But I went to, as an exploring training later on on the Okeanos, but virtual because of COVID. <laughs> so I was from my home. But still, it was really fun in a way. I, I remember seeing Samantha just grabbing all automatic automatically like a whole bunch of pings 
and I was doing them one by one. <laughs> 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 I was like, how am, how am I just learning that I can <laughs> do this? <laughs> so it's been like looking back and forth, <laughs> like all the things that I can improve in the future if I were to get involved in motion mapping again. And yeah, after that I took a break. So I stayed in shallow water, coral reefs. Um, I really wanted to uh, get a paper out, like experience the whole side of academia. So I took like a break, I started working full time and then focused on that. And after a point, I decided that I wanted to stay long term on deep sea exploration. And that's when I got the courage, I applied to the Nautilus, applied to a master's program around deep sea. And here I am. So hopefully this is the start of a very exciting career in yes. ocean exploration. Where? So which lab will you be in? Oh yeah, I will be in Dr. Turber's, Turber's. Andrew Lab. Thurber, OSU. Andrew Thurber. Yeah, Oregon State University. Very excited. He works, um, coincidentally, like he works in both Antarctica extreme ecosystems and the deep sea. <laughs> so I can choose That's whichever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. Very Th cool. Thank you, Paula. And then, um, of course, the same question applies. To Adam. me? Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, hmm. Well, I, you know, it's somewhat similar to <laughs> Paola in that when I was in college, I kind of flitted around between a bunch of things, but then had an opportunity to do a research, undergraduate research deal out in Hawaii and kind of fell in love with volcanoes and, and Hawaii. And so then decided to go to graduate school um, in many ways to just kind of delay real life for a while, uh, <laughs> but wanted to get back to Hawaii. So I worked with a, a mentor, Kathy Cashman, who worked a lot in Hawaii and spent a lot more time in Hawaii working on active volcanoes and uh, really enjoyed that. And then at the end of my graduate career, uh, someone from Woods Hole, a fellow named Dan Fernari, asked her if she had any one graduating who thought about lava flows and uh, and it, I just happened to be right there at the right time and so I got out to Woods Hole for a postdoc and within a month was diving in a submarine on submarine lava flows and I kind of wow. fell in love all over again because uh, there was just so little known about about volcanic processes in the in the deep sea it just felt like there was lots of opportunity for discovery and for advancing the science and so I stuck around on the scientific staff at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution for 17 years and the last seven of that I served as the chief scientist for deep submergence for the deep submergence program with the vehicles Jason and Alvin and Sentry and uh, just really enjoyed both doing science, but also kind of working with the whole community of deep sea researchers. And then uh, a couple years ago, uh, Bob Bauer came by and said, hey, you might be interested in coming over to URI because we have this new Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute starting up. And that seemed like another great opportunity both to continue research, but also to uh, help this consortium of, of institutions and organizations work with NOAA to explore the deep sea, to develop new technology, to, to develop education programs. And so I came over to University of Rhode Island a couple of years ago and uh, just been fantastic to work with, you know, so many excellent groups and excellent people um, and you know that brings me out to sea on on this ship every once in a while and working with great colleagues and good friends Allison Fundus who you heard her name mentioned before um, I sailed with her on her first expedition and then mentored her master's degree so the the web of webs you know kind of <laughs> continues um, and yeah, that's about it. I don't know what the, the preparation is, except that when you find you know something you're really passionate about, it's totally worth 
following it um, because you know getting up in the middle of the night for a watch or getting you know writing that slogging through that paper or whatever it's just so much easier when you're when you're fired up about the thing that you're working on right and sometimes the path to get there doesn't look the way that you think it might it might exactly. be a job that you wouldn't have considered originally or that you didn't even know about um, yeah. but it's, it could be a foot in the door and a way to start working within the the community or the field that you're interested in Speaking from personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty I agree. much everyone, yeah. I yeah, feel like that's, that's so the true. theme with all of us. I yeah. it's not always like a, a straightforward path to getting here, but um, hey, well, yeah, so close. I studied earth and environmental science in undergrad. Um I decided sort of last minute my senior year to apply for the BU Marine program. Um I was like, past the deadline, and my advisor was like, just go for it. Um, and it was turned out to be a really good decision. I loved it. Um, I got involved in field work, and I also realized that I really love um, microbiology. So I, I started working in a marine ecology lab. Um, I was working on Brian Kennedy's project. Um, so I was annotating deep sea footage from a Falkor expedition. So pretty much what <laughs> I'm, I'm doing here, but on my little laptop on campus or at coffee shops. Um, so after I graduated, I started working at the Museum of Comparative Zoology. Um, I've been working in the invertebrates department as a curatorial assistant. Um, and just recently, I applied for a position as a lab manager in a MCZ lab. Um, and I'll be starting that position when I get back. Oh, how did I get here? <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so I, I was working with Brian Kennedy, uh, like, however long ago that was. Anyway, um, Brian reached out to me and was like, hey, we need someone for this expedition, are you interested? And I was like, yes, absolutely. It's like, I'll let you sleep on it. I was like, no need. <laughs> <laughs> part, of the, part of that may have been like me talking to Daniel Wagner, who's the chief scientist for OET saying, hey, I need someone sitting next to me who can identify these corals because I can't identify <laughs> any. <laughs> <laughs> but look at your coral ID now. I know. It's, I feel like uh, you've gotten really good. I've, I totally, right. but I will forget again as soon as we get <laughs> off the ship. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Jules. Uh, well, I guess, um, moi? Well? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Your story, your story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a moment. It all started okay. 21 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it all started. Okay. Anyways. A small island back home in American Samoa. Um, well, hello everybody. Um, well, my love for marine science really started when I was little. My dad would um, take me on his fishing boat and we would go out fishing and then my mom would teach us reef fishing and then would teach us the different parts of the fish and the cultural significance of each. Um, so I kind of forgot um, about it, but I always had uh, that love for the ocean. It wasn't until I got to our um, the American Samoa Community College where I had, I finally had the opportunity to um, major in marine science. So I was told like, Annie, you could, oh, did you hear? They're just starting up the program. Um, would you be interested? And um, honestly, I wasn't going to go for it because I do come from, I was going to go, my major was business at that time um, because I come from a, a very an entrepreneur. My whole family, we have, I have a family business back home. So everybody was telling me to take business class so I can graduate with a business degree so you can take on the family business essentially. So that kind of pressure allowed me to stay in for about a year and a half until I decided to rebel. 